So all you have to do is grab this thing and then just squeeze as hard as you can. And then it's gonna give you a number at the top. And the higher the number, the more power you have. Great effort, and we are, get your mind out of the gutter. It's 67. That's pretty good, very good score. Another day in the camp, another day in Canada, and today we have the guy of the guys from Canada. We have Coach Greg in here. What a day would it be without checking my buddy Fred exactly. from the coach himself. So I just saw the old school caliper, the old school logbook, so. <laughs> old school, this is 30 years old but this is about the best one you could get. So it's still the test it, of time. I used it as well. I see a lot of muscle, that's all I see. Yeah. But 275 pounds, remember this guy, he has to cut down for classic physique, what is it, 230? 220. <laughs> he thinks shut he's gonna up, lose 55 up. pounds to make the weight shut limit? Up. That's not even, okay, we're gonna find yeah. out his lean body mass, and he probably has more muscle than the weight limit. I don't know how you're gonna lose all this weight, Maybe you just stop the secret. He the stops way. training three months yeah. out from the Olympia. Shh, don't tell this is me. how he does it. I can't believe that this is classic. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and just do a turn. I I don't understand how you're not in men's open. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you're way bigger than I expected and, and leaner than I was expecting at this kind of a size. It doesn't make sense. Are you guys seeing this? What is even happening right now? I mean, I'm gonna say 11%. Really, that, that low? I don't know how we're gonna pinch the skin on this. There's so much muscle, but we'll try. All right, okay. Okay, we got 3.1. So I'm just gonna test four spots and then I'm just gonna add them up and then look on the chart, simple as that. So far, so good. And the tricep, we're going halfway between shoulder and elbow. Relaxed, that's good. Not much on the tricep, geez. 4.8. All right, let's see the back. This is my weakness. This is where I hold all my fat. All right. Subscapula. For this size, it's, this is not a lot. We got 11.1. Oh my goodness, there's hardly anything here. That's very low. We got 5.5. I can't believe <laughs> that you weigh 275. How close do you think I was to 11? Do you think you it's 11? higher or do you think it's lower or higher than it's my 11? Higher. You're predicting higher? Yeah, 13. 10.3. Shut up. 10.3% body fat, 275 pounds. What the fuck? Well, how could you have more fat? It's all muscle, like. All right, so now we're going to calculate his fat-free mass, as in if I, cut out all the body fat on his body and just had muscle remaining. We're gonna find out how much muscle you have on your body. And so get this, I mean, this is just comedy to me. It, he's actually trying to convince you that he's doing classic. This is his coming out party. Urs is going to open, everyone. It's newsflash, he's not in classic. The, I see the news flash. And so if he didn't make any improvements to his physique, you stop training right now, and we just cut off all your body fat, you would be on stage with 0% body fat, which is physically impossible, 246 pounds. So you have to lose 26 pounds of muscle. We need to make it possible. To make it down to 220. <laughs> so, fuck. so if I were your coach, I would say take the next six months off and start training a couple months from the Olympia. Because what's the point of training when you're putting on muscle that you have to remove? What do you think about this? Men's, are you aware of this? Men's physique. They, they have height and weight classes after this yeah, Olympia. Yeah, they get it. I, I just watched it recently and I'm a fan of it, honestly, because I met some guys in men's physique, they they're were 250. <laughs> yeah, they're too big. And that's way too big. So my, own, I, I think it's a step in the right direction. My only problem is, does that not immediately tell every single guy competing in men's physique they're not allowed to train legs? No, because Jim also said two hours after the post, he said like, okay, everybody comes up with this topic about legs yep. and they also gonna, um, reward good legs because when they see lagging lagging um, lower body also throughout the, the the trunks you know the longer ones they say hey it's not comparable 
I can tell you as a certified bodybuilding judge and someone who's judged shows, the judges are not looking at their calves and how their yeah. legs form under the shorts because you could buy tighter shorts and it's going to look more filled out. So I think it rewards the bodies that naturally have smaller legs. If you've been training squats for 10 years, just like yeah. you just want the big legs, even though you're in men's um, physique, mm -hmm. you're going to be at a disadvantage to people who are actually like training properly. So what, what's, what's your My solution, solution is yeah. the judges should just judge appropriately. You line everyone up and you say, you're too big, last place, you're way too big, last place. Simple. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a judge and I'm looking there, and if you look great and you have a small waist, the wide shoulders, you look classic. I mean, you look like men's physique, but you're just way too big. And so I would say, I love your physique. I would trade places in a heartbeat. I, I want you to win, but you're getting last place because you're in the wrong class. Yeah. I think that's as easy as it has to do. I don't think the height and weight really is going to help that much. Another thing they could do is maybe have shorts that like yeah. cover here and then you could say okay you're men's That's physique good. but I, I still want to see that you, you did some, some squats once or twice. Upper body with a bit Like of why not have a bit of a tighter, drop. yeah exactly I'd like to see a little bit like halfway down the leg. Yeah. I don't need to be posing trunks but some a little bit shorter. Or they need like very um, skinny posing trunks or very tight posing trunks mm. and then you can, you can see it better. Yeah. Like, how is the volume? What I always wanted to know, how you started with this whole thing. How you started bodybuilding? I started lifting weights with my, my dad, my twin brother, when I was 10 in the basement with like the old like plastic weights with the cement. And then I just loved it. I was strong yeah. even from the get-go. And then I saw an episode of That's Incredible where this 13-year-old was doing the last yeah. spreads and both. I'm like, I'm going to do that one day. My dad's like... There's no way you could do bodybuilding. You, all I ate was junk. I yeah. had the worst diet in the world. All I <laughs> ate was desserts. Like the worst food diet in the world. He's like, there's no way you could do bodybuilding. You have to eat healthy to do that. And so fast forward 20 years and crazy. I certainly changed that. What I do, like to do is traveling around the world, training with a lot of guys and see how they're gonna train. And I trained with Hassan, with Ian in the last months. Yeah. And now I can see like the difference of training. And what's funny, everybody has their own kind of Different, training Different, unique style. twist to everything. Yeah. Yeah, if you meet 20, 20 guys you train with, and you take one tip from each guy, yeah. you just learn 20 new tips yeah, that could it. make or break your training. For example, Hassan is training so light, or he can go so much heavier, but he trains so precise and Doing everything perfectly. It's like uh, Phil Heath. Yeah. He uses the lightest weight that he can still get the same resistance. He just his concentrates heart. a certain way. Yeah. That way he doesn't overtrain the body, he doesn't get injured. And he can yeah. keep training into his 40s, no problem. What do you think what works work best for you? I think when it's you somewhere see your in the whole middle. Career? Was it the high volume stuff or like everybody's doing now, the high intensity, two sets, I think, back of thing? I think it's a bit of both. I think that if you if you, if you do too much volume, you can't train with the intensity. And if you yeah. train with too much intensity, you can't get enough volume. True. Somewhere in between. I think it's got to be a compromise. Yeah. And I also think it's important to match up what you like doing. So if you like doing a lot of volume, yeah. but you don't want to really train hard, well, that's okay. Yeah. But if you want to push really hard like I do, yeah. then do less volume. Because you need to enjoy <laughs> the workouts that you're doing. You can go harder. Yeah. <laughs> awesome yeah I also like the intensity more but I, I don't know how to regulate the volume perfectly because sometimes I think hey I'm not sore or something and I can't go way more but do you think soreness is beneficial I 100% or... recommend using soreness as a guide so what I would say if you're sore you went too hard yeah. automatically okay anytime you're feeling sore the next day that domes doms delayed onset muscle soreness yeah gone too hard then train easier than last time okay narrow it down now if you train and you're not sore at all but you're making gains mm -hmm. then do that because yeah. that's the minimum amount of work you need to do to make progress okay. why would you train harder progressive that's will roll from there but if you're if you're not making any progress yeah. and you're not sore train harder than the last time okay 
That's the best, that's the best way and easiest way to just go into the gym and guide your own training if you don't have a coach. It's great to have some, some pros here, especially pros like, Co uh, like Greg, which also coaches and uh, trained for how many years? 25? 37 30. years <laughs> of training. It doesn't even make sense. I'm that old. So we're doing one arm at a time tricep press downs. Do you here. like unilateral work? I never do them. I, never? I, for me, I like what doing both arms at the same time. Yeah. It saves time. So one arm at a time, it's like, okay, then I got to do the other. Yeah. So it adds more time. I do my full body two or three times a week. Yeah. And so I go from one machine to the next to the next. And so if I had to do one arm at a time, it's adding some time. Yeah. And I find I push harder on the first arm. And then when I get to the next arm, mentally I'm a little taxed. Yeah. So what do you recommend? Start with like the weak side first. Like my left tricep is way smaller because of that I bike would accident. I start with the left side. Start yeah. with the left side yeah. and then go to the right. And yeah. how much do you rest between sets here? I rest a lot. So I go left, you go left because of the, of the breath you need to take. Mm -hmm. Because I see the most of the mistakes guys doing. They go right side, doing 20 reps, bang yeah. it on. Then they go to the left side and then after eight they are done because they don't have enough rest for the for the whole system. And so basically, rest as long as you need. Does so that yeah, seem like if yeah, it's, if it's me, one minute, it's one. If it's four, it's but four. But I like to go faster. I'm I like to push it, and I, when when the moment comes, I'm I'm getting I'm getting uh, cold in the, in the gym. I'm done. But you have great cardio, yeah. though. You're saying your resting heart rate is yeah. around 30. It is good. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And so I'm maybe dying. you just have the genetics <laughs> yeah, for being amazing genetics. at cardio and yeah. being able to lift weights. But what are your top three triceps exercises? Tricep press down for sure, yeah. but I wouldn't use it with one arm. But I mean, it doesn't mean it's not not for you. And you would go like this or more in front of it. I try to keep my elbows as close to the sides as possible. Just look at the, look at those guys. Without guns. without like really for like if you don't swing a little bit, if you don't cheat at all, you're yeah. limiting how far you can go. Yeah. Like if you do perfect technique, like people will be like, oh, I need perfect no. technique. No one lifts like that. Yeah. In the real world, no one does perfect technique with no weight. You need if you swing a reps. little bit at the end, the cheat reps. Yeah you're gonna be able to push that much further. And so training to failure with perfect technique, you're not actually training to true failure. It's just no. like, yeah, I'm training to failure, but what if you and swing it a little bit? Feels, it feels right, I would say, right? For a beginner, that's exactly how you should train. You should train like with the perfect technique until yeah. you gather, like the, the, you get used to it and you can do that a bit better, but when you're a professional or <laughs> after, even if you're an intermediate, you gotta like, no professional bit. trends like Like you really perfect. think they're gonna do bicep curls against the wall and not bend at all for every single rep? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. You're gonna do maybe the first eight strict and then you're gonna just a and little I, bit. I trained with Jay at the, after the FIBO yeah. and he looked at me and he was like, you're training way too, too good, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there like, is such a thing yeah. as training too perfectly. And Your form is too perfect. Yeah, and I did like a dumbbell um, rows with him and I filled his back and it connected perfectly. Yeah. So you see those guys training, Ronnie doing this fucking heavy weights, crazy amount of muscle, but he controls every part of it. And that's what, what you said. Uh, and so in reality, if you see someone training with picture perfect technique from the first rep to the last rep, they're just training too light. Yeah. Sorry. Like Good you're work. saying, oh, great yeah. job, perfect technique. Yeah. yeah, but you're only putting 30 pounds on the bar instead of 100. That's why it looks perfect. For it them. Is. And when people demonstrate, when bodybuilders usually demonstrate exercises, they put their warm up weight and they show how perfect it is. They don't show the actual yeah. set. When you put on more weight, it starts to get sloppy. All right. so. Try to guide me here. Do you want me to have my foot up? <laughs> Whatever's comfortable? Yeah. Literally, it doesn't matter. If you feel good like this, and you want it like, or you feel good like this, just do what you need to do. You well, want to keep your core tight. Yeah. You I want like to this put to, the hand here also. That can brace yourself, get yeah. you more leverage. Stay, stay really tight. Important you know? to have that at least at 90 degrees. Some yeah. people, they, if you're only going like this, it, you're not getting the most out of it. You want to get some stretch because for the muscle to get bigger, you want to have it stretch and contract. And so by raising it higher, you're getting the stretch and then you contract hard. And I recommend pausing at the bottom. What yeah. do you think about the pause? Or do you just kind of- I love pause? it. No, I, I go with- Pause, squeeze. I also do a little pause at the top end of the back end of the motion. So that you don't have the stretch so reflex. I always have like here, Yeah. a little pause there. 
And then maybe when I start my cheat course, I go a little bit more like, but always have a little break in the squeeze. And so two great reasons why that's effective is because it's reducing the risk of injury because yeah. when you come up and you just use momentum, it's gonna really increase the risk of injury. You and need by to use good momentum, that's the, that's the big thing. And if you, if you pause the weight, it's going to be that much harder. Yeah. You have to work harder at the start because if you just let it bounce, it's, it it's just, you're making it easier. And that's and what we're trying to do. For bodybuilding, you need to make the weight as hard as possible. Exactly. And possible. technically, almost by definition, ego lifting is when you're trying to put more weight than you need to have. Yeah, yeah. And so you're putting on an extra 20 pounds, but then you're swinging it. Just mm -hmm. put the weight down and do it, do it right. I like to go faster on the way down and slower on the way up. So hard here and take my time here. Yeah. Hard down, Control take my negative, time here. That's it. And so for me, I'd rather have two arms. That's just my personal, it doesn't point. mean there's anything wrong with it. But for me, if you're trying to save times, just do them at the same time. All right, this is gonna give you a really good stretch in the triceps. Yeah. You really will feel that flexibility. We don't have that machines. I have a really tough time keeping my elbows yeah, close. Like it's, it's tough. So, I mean, you're supposed to keep it really tight, but I automatically have to go out. Um, but it, here it, it is great. It's working good. And so you try to keep your elbows close together as much as possible, but everyone has different genetics. Some people are able to do it closer than others. It all depends on the person that's doing it. And so do your best to keep it close, but if it's starting to flare out a little bit, it's perfectly okay. And so for me, I have one injured tricep from a bicycle accident. So this arm is way stronger than the other. So I typically use machines and I put more weight on one side than the other. For a warm up set, I typically recommend you should be getting 50 reps and it shouldn't be hard. If you can only get 10, then it's not a warm up. It's, it's too hard. But if it's so light that you could go all day, then what do you just do? So put a weight that is taxing, but not taxing enough that it's gonna make you tired for your next set. When you see your whole career, do you think you had, had to do more warm up? Or was it, was it good for all the years? To be perfectly honest, when I was 100% natural, I didn't need to warm up as much mm -hmm. when I started using performance enhancing drugs. The risk of injury was that much higher and it yeah. got that much stronger. Your tendons aren't able to handle that load. And so I would do more and more warm ups just to be safe. Okay. So anyone out there, if you're starting, not that you should, and remember, don't break the law, all that good stuff. But if you are, be very careful when you're trying to lift heavier weights because your muscles are gonna get very strong very quickly, but the tendons, ligaments, they can't handle that load. And so please warm up effectively and it's better to do one extra warm up than one warm up too few. You also became an, an, an businessman, you know, what I really look up to because you made so much more out of your career and that's, that's great. Um, what, changed, what changed with that? Is it, is it more work and you, can train well, let's properly be honest, anymore. I never made one dollar competing as a pro and I did multiple pro shows, yeah. so I knew there was no money in being a professional bodybuilder. What being a professional bodybuilder gives you, it's kind of like the respect and it's achievement. It's kind of like having your PhD. Yeah. As soon as you have that PhD, yeah. it's like, oh, now you're respected doctor, PhD. Yeah. And when you have an IPB pro card, you're automatically given the respect of being like, okay, he was able to put in the work and dedicate himself to get shredded and it to is. build that physique. And so everyone that's looking to hire you as a coach automatically has that respect. Versus if you're an amateur, you're not at the same level as yeah. if you're a pro. And so what I did was I tried to market myself to uh, as many people around the world. I maximized the amount of people I could coach in my yeah. area. Went to YouTube and started saying, hey, this is how much calories in this, this is how you lose weight. Was, was YouTube the platform to build up your business, co uh, your, your, uh, your coaching business? A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. When, crazy. just some, some pure facts, when I started to take off on YouTube, once I got to like 30,000 followers, yeah. not that many, my prices were doubling and tripling, wow, wow. quadrupling yeah. and quintupling, is that yeah. even a word? Quintuple, <laughs> five time, fivefold. Within six months, my prices had gone up fivefold yeah. because my demand was so much higher yeah. and I could only coach so many people. So I was coaching 64 people at a time at one point and I was working like 16 hours some days. Yeah. It was just, I couldn't do it. So with back training, do you prefer more training the width or the thickness? They should be equal. There's no, there, there should be no preference given to one or the other. Because They're I see equally a lot of important guys to me. Doing like this day, I just focus on width. This day, I just. Is it 
I think it's, it's nonsense. Old school, yeah. It you would be like saying, I'm going to train chess, I'm focusing on lower chest, yeah. and the next day I'm going to it do is. upper chest. Yeah, true. true. It's chest. Like, it is. It back, it's back day. We're doing all the back. Yeah. Every muscle in the back. We're not going to say upper versus lower, middle, out. No, it's just you're training your back. Yeah. Give this a go. Good old Mac grips here. Mm. Yeah, he's he's telling us something about warming up properly, and now he's doubling the weight. Well, it's got to be a weight you can do for, for 15 reps. <laughs> With, with good control. So your, your warm up was a little bit light, I would say, yeah. but I mean, better it's to do warm up broken. sets. So for me, I only need one or two warm up sets, but if you're training like super heavy, you might need three, four, even five warm up sets. Especially yeah. if you're going for like five rep maxes, you need to warm up a lot more. As well, right? So typically, I fail between 10 and 15 reps on my hard sets. Yeah. That gives me That's a good close. chance to, to push hard, time under tension, and avoid getting injured. 70 pounds, there it is. I don't know why this feels so much better with the grip. It's so it? smooth, the grip is, is it? solid. It just feels good in your hands. Yeah. It is, it is the hand which gives you so much mind muscle connection. And even feel. switching your grip ever slightly, like if it's inside yeah. versus pronated or, or supinated yeah. can make a big difference in how the back feels. But my, my best word of advice, pick this grip that you like the most and stick with it. It is, yeah. Whatever makes you happier, you're yeah. gonna keep doing it. If you hate gripping this way and you like this way, well do the way you like. Yeah. You have to like your training. It might be the best exercise in the world, but if you don't enjoy doing it, you're not gonna go on and go hard. Yeah, also with this, this whole volume topic about two sets of five working sets, when you love to do 10 sets of squatting, go for it. If you wanna do 10 sets of squats, hmm. just don't go to failure. Yeah. Because if you go to, you, you can't go to 10 there sets of squats, it'd be 10 too much. System, you know that? I did 10 times 10 yeah. in the bench press when I was oh, about 17. Really? For three months straight, my bench press was stuck at exactly 292 pounds. Really? I had I would put the collars on to yeah. add up the pounds. I was very meticulous. Yeah. I couldn't get stronger for three months. I was overtraining, 10 sets of 10, and I was doing it every day. Yeah, crazy. I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, I would literally go in the basement and bench press. Every like, day. Every day, wow. and it would never went I up. I did once a week, and it was enough for me. I was like, <laughs> Fucking crazy. I got bored of it, yeah. and I just quit, and I started doing triathlons, and I picked it up like later in the year. That's crazy. Good old days. Do some pullovers here. Oh yeah. I like doing these. I do them yeah. pretty much every back workout. Me too. I usually finish off my back workout with these because I find it easy in comparison to like rows or any of that I stuff. I love to start so with I, it. You want to warm up the muscle, pre-exhaust a little pre bit. To get a yeah. yeah. And to get a better connection. Because when you have full lats and you're rowing something, So not for a me, game. because I train my whole body yeah. in, in one day, I want to do the harder exercises earlier in the workout. Because if okay. I, if I pre-exhaust at the end of the workout, I might be running on fumes because it's your whole body. Yeah. It's a hard to really go, go as hard the body. last 10 minutes than the first 10. Oh. So I get the hard stuff done earlier on, or weak body parts yeah. earlier on, when I have the most energy, I can put the most effort to it, and then by the end, when I'm fatigued. That's interesting. It's I did full body once, because back in the days, the guy said like, when you are natty, you need to do the highest frequency you can. And then I did, I did four full body workouts a week. Four? Four. That means two in a row on some day. Yeah. Hey, tell me about your calves, but, do you train them? And if so, do you train them last? Like your smarties, do you eat them last? Do you train your <laughs> I big train calves them, last? Maybe it's because I'm, I love to go on race, but uh, I trained them last time 22 weeks ago. So I haven't trained them for 22 weeks. Zero calf day, 22 These weeks. These guys' calves are bigger than Brentley's. Do you know who Brentley G is? No, Brentley G was don't. 572 pounds, he's six wow. foot four, and he's been on his weight loss journey. He's down to 457, but he's got like 20 some inch calves because he carries around 500 pounds. That's it. That's all what day. I wanted to so say. So he has to have huge calf muscles. That's what I wanted to say. I think, of course, it's genetic. But I was a, I was a fat boy when, when you were I, younger. When I was younger, and I did break dance, and my teacher said to me, "Hey, you need to, you need to, to get off some weight to do all the power moves and all the stuff. You need to to have a lower weight for it." 
and I was walking every day. I always joking about I, I don't have a driver's license for 25 years, so I ground off calves. But <laughs> honestly, there is something real behind it because I need to walk every day. When I was big or fat, when I was a child, every day to the school back and to the school and back, and my calves improved significantly. And do so. you know that there's fast twitch muscle fibers and slow twitch yeah. muscle fibers, and in the calves. They're more predominantly the slow twitch muscle fibers through evolution because you have to walk all day. Yeah. So the body naturally adapted to yeah. going great distances. And so you have more slow twitch muscle fibers in the legs. The fast twitch muscle fibers, they grow bigger yeah. and faster and they're stronger, more explosive. So a lot of people have genetically smaller calves, but for you, because you have such big calves, I believe that just genetically, yeah. people with big calves are born to be bigger guys with bigger muscles. Yeah, I believe absolutely. there's a direct correlation yeah. between calf size and potential for bodybuilding yeah. size in the end. Look at Flex Lewis. It is. These, are, these calves are ridiculous. It's crazy. Also, all the guys, I thought the same, but I don't want to say it loud because <laughs> I don't have 30, 37 years of experience behind my... I say speak your mind, and if people disagree, then that's okay. Cool. What are we going to do now? One arm chin-ups? One arm chin ups. Please tell me you can't do a one arm chin up. Okay. I was like, if he does a one arm chin up. <laughs> but I can't do like. World arm wrestling <laughs> champion here. I can't do like muscle ups anymore. I can't even That's do one muscle one. up. I what? never could do it. I tried all the swing and I just, I don't have the coordination. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of technique, but I can't do it. I was like, how hard can anymore? it be? These kids are doing it. Yeah. I grabbed the thing and I, did, I had no chance. I was like, nope. Let's wrap this up, guys. That was a great day with Coach Greg. If you want to check out this channel, I definitely re recommend you. Great, great recipes, great videos, everything um, about bodybuilding. This guy covers up, so yeah, make sure. I gotta interrupt. Let's this is this. important for them to know. It's physically impossible for this guy to make the classic physique weight class. He's 275, he has to make 220 pounds. It's gonna be possible. 10.3% body fat. If we take off the fat of his body, the guy's weighing 246. How are you weighing 220? Between me and you, there's no camera. Yeah. You're not training the last three months from the Olympia. <laughs> That's the secret. secret. You just do cardio. Them, yeah. Only cardio and eating no food. And anymore. so there you have it. You want the real truth? Follow our channels. <laughs> Let's go.